The only way you're actually gonna have a glow up in 2024 is if you have a real hard intervention with yourself. I am all about internal glow ups, but I am also as equally invested in external glow ups because I'm not going to ever be the random person on the internet telling you that you need to just love yourself the way you are because it doesn't work. I'm also not gonna lie to you and tell you that looks don't matter, your appearance doesn't matter. It does. In this video, I am going to share six areas of your appearance you need to evaluate, modify, and optimize in order to truly be confident in your skin. The theme of today's video is personalization, so buckle in because this is your specific plan of how you're going to glow up in 2024. And if you want a free guide of everything I'm talking about, grab it down below. Before we begin, I think it's important that I share my personal stance on physical appearance. I think taking care of yourself, your external appearance is one of the highest forms of self-love. I think that we've been blessed by God, by source, to have a soul in a physical body. Why not optimize it? Why not elevate it? Why not make it the best that it can be? It doesn't have to be a vain thing that you get all stressed out about like, oh my God, am I shallow? Am I this? Am I that? Nobody's shallow for taking care of themselves. You are doing all the internal work. You should have the external to match the internal. And that brings me to point number two, which is I think it is of the utmost importance to master the art of showcasing your internal value through your external appearance, because what is unseen goes unnoticed. This is today's video outline and make sure you're staying to the end of the video so you can have your specific to-do list of how to apply everything we talk about today, but also get all the key takeaways so you're not sitting here spending time pausing and writing notes, pausing, writing notes. I got you, I've already done it for you. So just sit back and relax and enjoy the video. The first step is the intervention process. Now I need to remind you, you cannot hate yourself into a person you will love. So you need to do this entire process with love, with neutrality, with acceptance. We are not having a one man roast session. This is not victim hour. This is, I am hot AF, I'm great, the base is great. I'm just not doing my best for my appearance. So we have to instead do a little professional intervention, all professional, no hate, no judgment, no negative vibes, pure professionalism when coming to terms with what we're working with. This means analyze your baseline. What is your normal appearance state? Are you a four? Are you a five? Maybe you're blessed and you're an eight. That could never be me, but congrats if it's you. Really just figure out what your normal baseline appearance is because then we can start doing things to bump up the number. I do believe that most of the bumping up comes from the internal shifts. However, this video is all about the external shifts because there are some things that we can do externally to bump ourselves up and to go above our baseline. And those external things can be elevated by using my formula, E-O-M. That is evaluate, optimize, modify. This is the formula we are going to be using, you are going to be using to facilitate your external glow up. This formula is truly a game changer because it helps your glow up. You look different to me. So it helps you really specify and make this glow up yours and personalize this glow up to fit your needs, what you're working with, what you're not working with. That is why step number one, the intervention process is so important, again, without calling yourself ugly. There are six categories I want you to evaluate, optimize, and modify because these six categories make up your entire physical appearance. Number one is hair. This is very, very underrated and overlooked. Unless you are not like me, I've been living under a rock, living in the clouds, not really thinking or realizing how important hair is to the overall visual aesthetic of you. So one of my 2024 goals is actually to like make this hair a lot better, grow it, make it more voluminous and you know, healthy and all of that stuff. But hair is so huge. So let's take the EOM formula and let's apply that to our hair. So evaluate your hair. Is it thin? Is it frizzy? Is it curly? Is it dead straight? Does it lack volume? Evaluate what is going on with your hair. What are its weaknesses? And then figure out what your hair goals are. Would you like it to be less frizzy? Would you like to just learn more about how to style your thin hair? Maybe you're okay with the thin hair and you just wanna style it. 
Maybe you're not okay with the thin hair and you want to get extensions to add volume. Maybe you want to go the natural route and learn some home remedies for hair growth. Figure out what your hair is, what the weaknesses are of it, and then evaluate what are you trying to accomplish with your hair. Then we're going to optimize our hair care routine to suit that goal. If it's frizzy, consider looking into hair care routines that are moisturizing and hydrating, maybe a silk pillowcase or a silk bonnet to control the frizz. That has been honestly a game changer for my hair. I wake up and the hair is not out to here as if I've just put a plug in and fried myself. It's, it's definitely a game changer. So like if frizzy is your goal, and by the way, you can have multiple goals, obviously. It's just coming out with what your weaknesses are, what your hair goals are, and then optimizing your routine to fit that and modifying what you're doing to your hair in order to accomplish the hair goal. Next is skin. Skin and I have a very tumultuous relationship. One day we're good, one day we're bad. I don't know how you feel about your skin, but it is a huge player in the way that you look, in your overall confidence. Same formula application, evaluate. What is the skin doing? What is your skin looking like? What are the strengths? What are the weaknesses? What are you trying to work on? What are your skin goals? Is it uneven? Do you have acne? And if so, what kind of acne do you have? Do you have texture? Do you have hyperpigmentation? What kind of acne scars do you have? Are they over the surface or under the surface, like kind of ice pick scars? Is it dry? Is it dull? Then modify your skincare routine to fit your goals. Optimize your skincare routine to align with the goals that you're trying to make happen. Basically, is to just understand your skin type. We sensitive girlies, I don't know if you have sensitive skin and what your skin type is, but my skin is sensitive. I went gung-ho doing all these crazy peels and it completely broke my skin out and I had to really come to terms with what other people are doing, I cannot do for my skin. So I had to optimize my skincare routine to fit those goals. That means not using 17 different toners, not using 10 different serums every single day. It just wasn't working for my skin. So the first thing that you really should be doing is figuring out what your skin type is. Combination, oily, dry, normal, sensitive, and then you can figure out the kind of skin treatments you should be doing bi-weekly or monthly. The type of skincare that should be in your skincare routine. Should it be moisturizing and hydrating? Should it be controlling your oil? Should it be targeted toward your acne? But some general tips that I would recommend is looking into things like microneedling, face peels. Again, if you have sensitive skin, do this monthly. Now, you might not agree with me on this and you might be thinking, this is why you messed your skin up but I'm the DIY queen. I will always be the girl that does things at home if I can. So these facial peels can be done at home by yourself. I personally order mine from Makeup Artist Choice, I think it's called, and they have fantastic peels. Now, since I've done a bunch, the best peel for sensitive skin is a mandelic acid peel. Again, even though it's super light, it's a very superficial peel, you wanna do it if you have sensitive skin once a month or every two weeks. But if you have another skin type, you can look into the other peels that they have on their website for your skin goals. Facial peels are very, very good. You should definitely be doing a facial peel. It just varies on when you're gonna do that peel. Some other general things I recommend for your skin, do not pop pimples. I know, I know. I'm right there with you. You don't even have to say it because I'm thinking the same thing you're thinking, but we got to stop popping our pimples. When it comes to the face, um, this is not skin, but this is face related. Tinting your eyebrows, waxing your eyebrows, doing whatever suits you to tame the brows. I was a victim of the Groucho Marx eyebrows because I laminated the brows. And for me, lamination doesn't suit my face. It makes me look very crazy. And I have been told several times on previous videos, like early, early videos that I looked crazy. And I agree with you, I did look crazy. My eyebrows look nuts. So again, it's about finding what suits you. We can't be out here going by trends because what looks good on you might not look good on me, vice versa. So you have to really experiment and figure out what works for you. Definitely tint your eyebrows so they have that natural color. I am all about doing the most so that I can do the least, if that makes sense. When I do the most, it's on a Sunday or it's the night before I wake up and I wake up looking beautiful, effortless, everything amazing, but it's because I'm doing the most the night before and every single Sunday. Number three is body, same formula. 
evaluate the body. We have neglected body skincare. I am in 2024, I am all about advocating for body skincare because we're only focusing on the face and then the body is looking all like decrepit, it's looking dull, it's looking ashy, uneven, and it's just not working for me. That's gonna be one of my goals. Hopefully you'll join me on board, but body skincare using a retinol on your body. Two suggestions here. When you're using your moisturizer, you can either add drops of whatever, like AHA, BHA, whatever active you want to add into your moisturizer, or you can buy it already done for you. I personally prefer adding it in my own thing because I know one, it's in there, and two, I can kind of measure how much I want to put in. Do I want to put more? Do I want to put less? I have control over how much is going into the moisturizer. So body skin is a lot more tough and tight than the face skin. We have to be very careful and gentle with our face skin, but our body skin can handle a lot more. So I personally dry brush and I do the exfoliation, like the body retinol, more than like three or four times a week. And then I body slug afterwards. So body slugging is just basically slapping Vaseline all over your body. And you might be like, that is so uncomfortable. How am I gonna sleep like that? Trust me, it gets easily absorbed into the skin and you're not putting the entire tub on your body. You're doing just nice, generous amounts, rubbing it in and really letting it lather. And you will wake up feeling and just looking hydrated, glowy and supple, boom bounce, bounce to the skin. Who doesn't want that? Now I wanna talk about exercise. I don't want to hear anything about, I'm ugly, I'm gross, I'm this and that, and you are not exercising. If you are not exercising in, in some form or moving your body in some form, that's a you problem. And we just like, there's just nothing that I can help you with. If like you have to move your body, you have to figure out what you're into. Do you like headphones in, strength training, just you and your thoughts in the gym? Or do you like a class? Do you like low impact? I personally love doing a hot girl walk. Podcast in, great combination. That's the physical body like aesthetics part of it. You definitely need a workout routine. You need a physical exercise workout routine. And then the third thing in the body category is evaluate your body hair. I heavily will be investing in body laser removal this year. I have got my face done, but I want to do my body this year. So if you are like me, you don't wanna shave. I wax currently, but it is exhausting. The theme of the video is personalization. If you don't mind body hair, you skip that part. I'm just suggesting things and I'm just kind of giving you an outline of what you can be doing in order to bump yourself up from your baseline. If body hair makes you feel great, all for it. Let's go for it. For me, not so much. Number four is style, personal style. How are you dressing? Do you dress like this or are we dressing like this? I'm telling you right now, because I have a video coming out on it, so I'm not gonna speak too much about it, but the way that you dress dictates the quality of interactions that you have with people. Again, I am not a liar. I'm not going to lie to you and tell you that the way that you dress is not affecting the kind of men you're attracting, the kind of opportunities that you're getting, the kind of like situations and interactions with general strangers are not impacted by the way that you dress. I'm not gonna lie to you, but I urge you to get your own personal style. I are, will always recommend a classy, chic style. I've done videos about it. I'm gonna do more videos on it. It's just the style that I feel drawn to and I think that it looks good on everybody. I don't think that there's not one person chic, classy, and just like elegant does not look good on. If you can find that person, send them my way, but I really don't think that there is because it does look good on everyone. I have been asked to showcase like curvy women. Here are some pictures of dressing that way if you're slightly curvier, if you're on the heavier side. It looks good on everybody. So find your personal style. I will always recommend the classy, elegant, chic style. And then when it comes to the fit of the clothes, I always just bought things that I thought were look good. Either they were on sale, either it was trending. I just bought it for some reason and it didn't actually look good on me. And then when I wore it, I just didn't feel confident and I was constantly pulling it down or I was like adjusting it. And that's just never gonna exude confidence because it's giving off that kind of chaotic energy. Like, oh God, okay. Like you're constantly like fidgeting with yourself. So always find clothes that fit you really well. If it's not a heck yes, it's a no. Number five is makeup. I have a very strong stance on this. The way that I look right now, this is my makeup, okay? I do a different makeup for filming and I do a different makeup look for like in person and my day-to-day -day life. However, because I have such big features, like my eyes are huge 
and I have higher cheekbones and things like that, my face is kind of smaller, I can get away with more makeup. I can get away with a lot more eye makeup. If you have smaller eyes and you did this kind of makeup, it wouldn't look good or it would just look a lot. It would overpower you. Find out what your features are. Figure out what you're working with, your strengths, your weaknesses. Do you have small eyes? What do you want to do? How do you want to optimize them? How do you want to modify yourself to make yourself look good and make you stand out in your uniqueness? Do you have thinner lips? Do you want bigger lips? How are you gonna accomplish that? How are you gonna achieve that without it taking away from the overall profile balancing of your face? If you are on the bigger nose side and you want a smaller nose, are you gonna contour? Are you gonna get a liquid rhinoplasty? There's so many things that we can do. I am not promoting doing any of that stuff. I personally believe in doing things that make you feel the most confident after you truly do have internal confidence. There's no point shifting and doing things to your face when you don't have internal confidence because the goal for doing those things aesthetically is gonna be, I need to get more confident and this is the only way I'm gonna do it. Once it's done, the confidence is still nowhere to be found. So I always recommend if you're gonna go the more cosmetic, enhancement side of things either surgery or you're doing it like non-surgical you know it's like filler and all that kind of stuff always do it after you have built this internal confidence then go ahead and do what you want to do because you're not doing it to gain something you're not doing it to gain confidence don't be a victim of hiding your best features with a bunch of makeup or just not elevating them or enhancing them the way that they should be enhanced. Figure out what you've got going on and modify and optimize that to make them come to life and to make you shine. Because, you know, I've always been the type when I was younger to try and fit in. I have very, very obviously different features than most women. It was always about trying to fit in and modify them to look like somebody else. But I have learned that the biggest blessing that you have is not looking the same as every other woman because you will make heads turn because you look so different. It'll be a breath of fresh air for people who have never seen somebody that look like you. There's just something there. So never ever hide your best features by modifying them to fit in and subdue them. Always modify them to optimize them to make you stand out. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. Number six. Hygiene. There are some rules that I need to get off my chest that I truly believe every single person should be following. You need to be using a tongue scraper. This is just standard practice in Indian culture. We are like gifted with a tongue scraper by birth as soon as we're born because it's such an integral part of your oral hygiene. They're like $2 on Amazon, go get a tongue scraper. Whitening your teeth, that can be a huge level up, huge game changer for your mouth. Scrubbing your lips with a sugar scrub, you can make them at home, a little bit of sugar, a little bit of olive oil, scrub your lips and do or die with Vaseline. You need to be applying Vaseline or a lip mask every single day. There should be no questions asked. Moisturized lips, game changer. It really is the smallest things that can make you look your best. It's just that we're not optimizing ourselves for these things, but now you are because this is just, this just needs to happen. A signature scent, find a perfume. Always be wearing a perfume, a daytime perfume when you're going out, a nighttime perfume when you're going out in the evening, when you're doing a date night, when you're going on a date, when you're hanging out with friends. You need to be smelling good 24 seven. Now I've got a bonus for you. Those are the six parts of your appearance, but these are just bonus things that will add to your overall level up, glow up game that should be a part of your 2024 physical goal plan. Number one, curl your eyelashes and use castor oil on your eyelashes, the lash line, the brows over and under the eye, dark circles, lash growth, brow growth, wrinkle prevention. Lash serum, amazing. You're going to bed with literally glowing eyes. You look crazy, but you're gonna wake up and you're gonna thank me. Self tanner drops two to three times a week and contouring with self tanner. Snatched as soon as you wake up. 
natural contour, natural glow, dewiness, radiance, suppleness, face taping if you are a face sleeper. I sleep on my side and on my stomach. So it's a little bit, ooh, bit wonky sometimes, okay? We can, we can be working with a little bit of asymmetry. So to help that without going and surgically, you know, intervening, face tape. So wherever, so I have this like weird brow. So every time I smile, I'm like this, and it's just kind of frustrating. So, you know, I face tape that to, to, to either I'll face tape this one up to match this one, or I'll face tape this one to like bring it down a little bit around your mouth for the smile lines. Wherever you're just lacking and you need a little bit of a zhuzh, face taping, okay? Google it, life changing. So that is your comprehensive video guide to glowing up in 2024 physically. If you want the downloadable version, full routine, grab it down below. for the internal glow up for 2024, watch this video next.